Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are at the post Christmas Day festivities in the NBA. Got some college basketball to talk about as well. So let's let's just kind of get into it. You know, first things first, I want to talk about is the in season tournament. That's the first thing I want to talk about. Was that a success? To me, I guess you can say it was because, you know, the NBA's got the ratings and stuff like that. The ratings were up and stuff like that. You know, you had a team like the Indiana Pacers led by Therese Halliburton, you know, who were able to get all the way before getting smacked around by AD, LeBron, and the Lakers in Vegas a couple of Saturdays ago. So the ratings and then and, and the way pay, some fans were intrigued, you know, by this whole thing, you know, that, that, that was good and all. But at the same time, it's like it's still an in-season tournament that, you know, it only got the players, you know, a minuscule amount of money because of, you know, it's not actually – the five hundred thousand dollars, whatever you know, taxes and stuff like that, you know, coming to play, and then that's technically an extra game on the schedule at this point. So yeah, I, I don't know at this point. I don't know, man. I don't know. It'll it'll probably continue like how the uh, the playing tournament continues, you know, to be a thing. So I expect this thing to happen next year. Will I watch the end season of the tournament? Probably not. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep it real. Uh, you know, I'm just gonna keep it real. Uh, I, I, I don't know. You know, at this point, I mean, when, when you really look at it, I mean, come on. This isn't soccer. You know, this is something that, you know, the NBA is trying to do to get regular season interest up. But is it working? I don't know. I don't think it is, but whatever. Whatever, man. Whatever. So that's all I got about that you know i don't really have anything to tell you about that what i do have to say is things about purdue fau uh purdue looking like one of the best teams in the country zach ed Brayton smith um easily number one in the country right now um yeah there was that lost northwestern in there but northwestern decided to lose games that made absolutely no sense fau on the other hand you know arizona <coughs> Shout out to Arizona, Omar Ballo, Caleb Love. You know, those guys have been leading Arizona on a charge. And these are the only two losses Arizona has is to Purdue and FAU. So, uh, and honestly, the FAU game was just absolutely magnificent. What an absolutely great game between uh, the Wildcats and the Owls. Now, the now, FAU is probably going to be favored for, like, most of the rest of their games. They have a really, again, 12 of their 13 guys from last year returned, and they are a force to be reckoned with. They have the resume so far, and they can keep building on that in American Conference play. Purdue, you know, Big Ten isn't as strong, I think, this year. Uh, Michigan's down. Ohio State had a loss to Penn State. Michigan State is wishy-washy. Yeah, Michigan State beat the brakes off of Baylor, but they also, you know, have some weird losses in there. Um, so it, it's 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 kind of hard, really, to see. Iowa has no defense, you know. So like, I feel like Purdue is going to really only maybe have like Illinois this competition this year. Maybe if Maryland can step it up. I think Maryland can get in there. But, again, the Big Ten is an absolute crapshoot as far as, you know, the regular season goes. We know what comes tournament time, uh, things get a little crazy. So, you know, with with the whole the whole thing about that, uh, 
I don't know at this point. I don't know. You know, when it comes to when it comes to things of this nature, you know, there's going to be a lot that we can say is just like, oh well, you know, FAU is, is kind of a fluky team or whatever, and then, you know, we could just go off on a different tangent. Uh but I mean, come on. With the way with the way some of these teams have been playing, you know, like Ole Miss is unbeaten, Providence is ten and two, Memphis is still hanging around with all the big wins that they have. Oklahoma only has one loss. Uh, you know, I I don't know at this point. I don't know. You know, is it, like teams like Louisville are absolutely terrible and need to fire their head coach. You know, at, at the absolute minimum. UConn still, you know, let, 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 let's talk about the Big East a little bit. Um, uh, the Big East a little bit. You know, the Big East is going to be an interesting beast this year. I think. Big East is going to be a little interesting beast. Uh, the way things have been in the Big East so far this year, uh, we have Marquette, you have teams like Creighton, you have UConn, of course, St. John's with Joel Soriano, uh, Providence, you know, again, top 25 right now. So the Big East is going to be very interesting. Probably, you know, it's probably going to be right up there with the Big 12. You know, so I think, I, and I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, well, it's going to be UConn or Marquette, but Marquette, you know, has lost some games. You know, people make fun of Tyler Kolek and everything like that, <laughs> but I mean, it's kind of unwarranted. Um, UConn, I know they just lost. Uh, who did they lose for like a couple weeks again? I forgot already. Who did they lose for a couple weeks? I want to say. I forgot. I already did have forgot. But I mean, UConn. UConn's an interesting beast, you know. They 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 don't they don't have all their guys, you know, and everything like that. I, I want to say who did they lose again? I forgot. It wasn't Newton, I don't think. Uh, oh, yeah, it was Klingon. Yeah, it was Klingon. I was like, no, no, no not, not Tristan Newton. It was Klingon. So, yeah, UConn, they should have a pretty easier road, you know, to start because they start with UConn. I mean, they start with DePaul, who's terrible. Uh, Georgetown is also pretty bad. You know, Creighton, Creighton isn't terrible or anything like that. St. John's is terrible. Uh, Butler's surprisingly, you know, at the top of the Big East right now. And then you have the gauntlet that is the Big 12. You know, why, why don't we talk about that for a little bit? You know, the Big 12 is an absolute gauntlet. Uh, you know, you have, you know, the Big 12 this year is going to be insane. Uh let me tell you, you know, you have teams like Houston, you have teams like Kansas, BYU, yes, BYU, yes, crazy. I, I know, but that, but again, there, there's a good reason for all that. LJ Cryer and 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 the Cougars, you know, they haven't really done too much as far as a resume is concerned. So far, uh, they have the win over Xavier. They have the win over Utah. Uh, that's about it, to be completely honest with you. So Big 12 play is coming for Houston. So it's going to be a absolute – it's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. Kansas, of course, Hunter Dickinson has been leading the way, um, you know, along with some other guys. BYU, again, very surprising. Oklahoma also very surprising. Baylor's still in the mix. TCU still in the mix. Iowa State since and a lot of these teams just have you know like one to two losses or stuff like that right now. Like Texas, again they have some good wins. They have some losses to some top tier Big East teams. Uh, Cincinnati has 
two losses. So again, and a lot of these games are probably going to be buried. Or like, and a lot of these games, you know, the next couple of weeks going to be buried on like ESPN Plus and stuff like that. So a lot of these big games, you know, in the Big Twelve, you know, the, the Fox deal will start next year. Uh, it, it would be very advantageous for, I don't know, maybe these games get elevated. Because there's some games, you know, that are broadcast on ESPN that don't deserve to be broadcast. But whatever, man. Whatever. Whatever floats the mouse's boat at this point. Whatever floats their boat. So, again, and I have, and again, I had Houston, you know, in a very, very interesting position to begin the year. You know, like, like I feel like they are going to go pretty much all the way at this point. So, the Big 12 will be an absolute meat grinder yet again this year, and I, I don't I don't know how else to say it. I don't know how else to say it. You know, like, what are we going to do with conference play starts? Like, it's going to be a bloodbath, man. So, yeah, John Morant returned. <laughs> Um, and he's been igniting the Memphis Grizzlies. They won a couple, won a couple games straight and everything like that. So I'm thinking, and I asked the question: Is 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 Memphis going to do something in the West? Are they going to be able to get to one of those seven to ten seeds? Maybe even a six five seed. A lot of people were like, maybe they can get like a seven to ten seed, or maybe they won't even sit the playoffs. But again, that twenty-five game suspension, you know, it, it it really showed what kind of team Memphis was without, you know, with without Ja. Because I mean, I, I I don't know, I don't know. Like I I don't know. Like this this team could be something interesting. In the near future, but right now they're still way under five hundred. But yeah, another guy, another guy that got you know suspended is Draymond Green. He got suspended indefinitely for his actions yet again. And at this point, it's just it's just the you know the Rudy Gobert thing, and now the Nurk, uh, the Yusef Nurkic thing. You know, you know, a couple weeks ago and stuff like that. So things have just been. Things have just been off for the Warriors. You know, the Warriors felt off. They lost yesterday to Denver. And I got and I gotta say, you know, one thing one thing that's really interesting is that, you know, it doesn't feel like Steph Curry and Clay Thompson, you know, really have been the biggest pieces anymore. You have uh Brandon Plazinski, uh Dr. Kaminga, Kevin Looney. You know, Chris Paul is 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 surprisingly on the bench, which is crazy. You know, uh, Dario Saric. So again, this is a solid. This is actually a solid lineup, and all these guys have been contributing. You know, but it's just like the main two guys, like Curry, can't perform on Christmas. Clay Thompson has off games, but everybody else, everybody else can get things done. And Draymond, you know, not being in the lineup. Really opens things up for guys like Kaminga and Looney, and you know, and uh, Wiggins as well. So the fact that the Warriors feel kind of off, they're still they're still definitely you know in that range of where they can they can definitely be a contender type team. Uh, but uh, I just don't know, man. I just don't know. I just don't know about this Warriors team this year. I, they don't feel the same. They don't feel the same. And another team that doesn't feel the same is the Phoenix Suns. They don't feel they don't they don't feel consistent at all. They don't feel consistent at all. The Suns are very inconsistent. Like you have Devin Booker, you have Kevin Durant, you have Bradley Beal. Bradley Beal hasn't really played at all this year. In fact, this big three has only played one game together. Which is crazy, but it's like, come on, you know. And yet again, last night, yet again, Luka Doncic said, "Devin Booker, you are my son, so I'm going to school you, young man. I'm going to school you yet again." 
And that's exactly what he did last night. And again, you know, the Suns, you know, Mavericks had their own set of problems, you know, with the fact that Lucas really the only guy contributing. But the Suns, I just don't understand it. Like, Kevin Durant should be putting up 30, 7, and 7 each and every night. And it's just like, he doesn't. He didn't do that last night. You had Grayson Allen of all guys doing that. You had Big Nurk down low, but you know some nights he's just like, "Oh, I'll grab only like two rebounds or something like that," and then other nights he'll grab like seventeen. So it just doesn't make any sense. And then Booker, Booker's just madly inconsistent. Like I just like the Suns. You know sometimes they'll rely on guys that. You know, really, who, who they picked them up from the parking lot, like Metsu last night. I just don't understand it to this point. How is this team like this? How, how, how is this team like this? I just don't understand. So the so the Suns, you know, they're gonna have to get the pieces figured out, get get something to get this big three together because most teams at this point have played like twenty eight to thirty two games. So something's got to give. There's, there's got to be something that's got to get put together for the Phoenix Suns. And then, you know, you know, as far as as far as the um, as far as the NBA MVP goes, is it Joel Embiid or is it Luka Doncic? And right now, honestly, you could make a case for either. When MB is not on the court, and that's happened like four times this year, including last night, in which, you know, Maxie did nothing, but Tobias Harris was, you know, balling out. Kelly Obrey was balling out. <laughs> it's like, what? what do you mean? What do you mean Tyrese Maxey did nothing last night? But yeah. Is it, is it Embiid who's been putting up staggering numbers like 30, 10, and 10 each and every night? Or is it Luca who's also been putting up like 30, 10, and 10 each and every night? And I mean, I don't know. Like, the Mavs without Luca just look like an absolute mess. And the 76ers without Embiid look like an absolute mess sometimes. But the caveat here is that, you know, the 76ers have other guys like Tyrese Maxey. Yeah, Tobias Harris isn't really very consistent, but you know, Maxey should definitely be, you know, the number two option. He is definitely the number two option behind MB. But for the Mavs, for the Mavs, do you really expect the Mavs to be in the position where they are without Luka Doncic? No. Like that game against Houston when he did not play. They got smacked around <laughs> like it was nothing. Like this, like the MVP should go to Luka Doncic, and you know when we come back to this discussion at the end of the season in April, and Luka wins the MVP, you, you might look at me crazy, but uh, I mean, come on, I, I feel like I'm in, I feel like I'm in the right here. I feel like I'm in the right as far as the MVP discussion goes. I feel like I'm in the right. But you tell me. I'll, I'll ask that in, the, in, a, in a post. I'll ask that in a post. I'll throw in Joker in there too, even though he's been, you know, he hasn't been playing, you know, the greatest past like six or seven games because Jamal Murray came back, and you know, Gordon and, and Porter Jr. have been, you know, producing as well. Uh, so there's like one more thing to really talk about and that is maybe I feel like there's like one more thing to really talk about and that is you know the women's game a little bit uh, so you know uh, you know what what can what can I say about the women's game that has been said right now you know, like the problem with the women's game right now, the problem with the women's game right now is that South Carolina has just blitzed everybody. They're still number one, unbeaten. You have you have teams like UConn with with Bukers, you know, 
Iowa with Caitlin Clark, um, Indiana, Tennessee, Texas, Baylor, you know. So the men's team is actually doing pretty good. But the women's team, of course, we all know what the women's team can do. So um, there are some big games coming up in the women's game that are definitely going to be featured, you know, actually on television, you know, like, again, that Baylor-Texas matchup I'm, you know, talking about at the moment. Really going to be interesting to see how how these how these two, you know, teams can play because Baylor has been, you know, a powerhouse for, like, the last 10 years in the women's game, but Texas is definitely a team, you know, that can – Rise to produce things on occasion, you know, as far as the women's, you know, college side goes. And again, you know, you know, the whole Iowa debate in the Big Ten with Indiana also in that conference, Ohio State, you know, slur, uh, slur, uh, slittering in there. That's what I want to say, slittering in there. Um, again, everybody's chasing South Carolina, everybody's chasing. The Gamecocks. So we will see what happens in the future. Definitely going to be watching South Carolina's game on Saturday against East Carolina. Again, just going to be watching some women's basketball in general this Saturday as you know we get prepared for New Year's Day in college football. You know, I'm going to be I'm going to be glued to my computer watching these women's games and not watching any football because I don't like bowl games. But yeah, so that's pretty much all I got to say on the NBA at the moment. And, and men's college basketball and women's college basketball. Uh, the WBA schedule is also out as well. It released like a week or two ago or something like that. So uh, that's going to be interesting to talk about in May when when we get there. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that'll do it for me. Uh, I'm going to get on out of here and skedaddle. I'll talk to you all later, you know, about – the NFL tomorrow. We'll talk to the NFL tomorrow. Lacrosse on Thursday, and that'll do it for 2023. So take care, have a good one, and I'll see you Wednesday.